I wouldn't think it's going to be a long sermon this morning. Uh, per se, and of course we don't have any music and we don't have any, we won't have an altar service this morning, but we can certainly make an altar where we are. So I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, and, and I pray that this will be a, a help and a blessing to you as always that the Word of God will minister to you. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and if you're again watching online, whether it's uh, live or you'll watch this later, if you'll leave a comment and if you'll let us know that you're praying with with us, we'd appreciate it. And if you have a prayer need that you want to bring before the Lord, please comment in, in that section there, and we'll help you pray over that need. So let's bow our heads. Let's invite the presence of the Lord in what we're doing here. Again, this is very different, very unusual, but it doesn't stop the gospel of Jesus Christ from going forward. Let us pray. Father, we love you this morning. Father, I just thank you, God, that even though that this is out of our comfort zone, out of the ordinary, that God, that you're still present, a present help in a time of need. And we're looking to you this morning, God, to, to minister, Lord, to me and through me this morning, God. And for all of those that will listen uh, in this morning, be watching, God, we just pray your blessings and help upon them. All of these COVID cases that we've had to deal with, not only in our church and in our families, but all over this nation and this world, Lord God, even though that it's raging, God, we know that, Lord, that you can speak peace to our heart in the midst of the storm. Now, Father, we bring this time before you, the preaching of the Word of God. We pray, God, that this Word will go out and it will accomplish what you sent it to do, Lord God, that you would confirm, Lord, your word with signs following. Let, let the sick be healed, God. Let the dead be raised. Let the deaf hear, Lord. Let the lost and the bound and the, those that are uh, being held and changed by the devil be loosed, amen, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we proclaim liberty to the captive, and God, we just thank you. And I, I want to worship you this morning. We bless you. If you're watching with us this morning, would you just lift your hands and solidarity with me this morning. Amen. We just worship you this morning. We praise and magnify you, God. We love you, Lord. We, we, we exalt you. We adore you today, God. And we thank you for what you're doing here today, God. And everybody said amen and amen and amen. So again, I want to start off this morning. I, I tell you, the Lord has been ministering to me throughout this week or, or even longer uh, on this psalm uh, that I wanted to share some things. I believe that the Lord will help you with and be a blessing to you uh, to, to this morning. I was going to say tonight, but this morning. So let us read the words of the Lord today. The Bible said that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we, I'm sorry, therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed and through the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah, that means to pause and to think on these things. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Now listen to this, church of the living God. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. Amen. I, I want to read verse 7, and then I'm going to read verse 10, and then we'll get into the message. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Think on that. Pause and think on that. And one of my favorite verses in the Word of God is verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Amen. May God bless the reading of of his word. So this morning, many of you know, and it's been a long time since I visited this particular passage of scripture as far as in a sermon or message. I, I didn't go through and look at any of my old sermons to see if I could find if I had preached on this in a while, but I don't think I've ever spoke to it, uh, to this particular passage of scripture in the way that the Lord is dealing with me now concerning 
God being a present help. Now, I know there's a lot of bad news out there, church, and I know there's a lot of stuff going on uh, in the news and, and, and throughout the whole world, the, the COVID, the political spectrum, and we speak to this quite often, what is going on in the transition of our governments, uh, government this uh, coming up week or so. But I'm going to let everybody know that in the midst of all of this, in the midst of all the voices. And, you know, I tell you, thank God for social media and YouTube and all of these other avenues that we can reach people. But there's a lot of people saying that all of this is going to happen and this might happen and this is going to happen. So it makes me want to turn to the Word of the Lord and say, God, what is really going to happen? What are you going to do? Amen. And we may not always get precisely or clearly what God is doing, but this is something that we can hold on to, that the Bible says here in verse 46 again, chapter 1, amen, praise God, that the Lord is our refuge. He's the one that we run to in our time of struggle, in our time of distress, in our time of tribulation and trial, amen, that God is the one in the midst of all that we're going through as a nation, as a people, and even so, church, we understand as a church what we're going through. We see now that there's a there has been since this started a uh, an attack, if you will, upon the church. There has been a, an attack against the gospel of Jesus Christ and the things that we stand for. But lo and behold, amen, don't worry, church of the living God, that God is our help, amen. Thank God. Now, so many of you have already received your stimulus check in the mail or either it's been deposited in your account. The preacher here, he's still waiting on his. I've not got mine yet, but let me tell you something. Whether we get a stimulus check or help from the government our help ultimately comes from the Lord amen David said I've not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread how many of you know this morning that God is able to take care of his people no matter what is going on in the in the circumstances of our lives or no matter what is going on in the nation in the streets and government amen God is our refuge and our strength amen thank God that he's my power that that same power here that the Lord is speaking of the sons of Korah here in the book of Psalm is the same power that Jesus promised to the believer amen in the book of Acts and also when he ascended he said when he descended he said go to go and tarry uh, in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high amen thank God that God that I don't look to the arm of man or the strength of the government or the strength of this one or that one, but my strength rests in the presence of God. The places that we go when we're in trouble, God says, turn to me, church. When times are rough and times are troublesome, I've had to turn the news off. I've had to uh, turn the, the, the social media off and get away from all of this because it brings fear. You know, and look at the nation, look at the world is gripped in fear fear at all that is going on but I'm here to tell you that when God wraps his arms around his people and he tells us and whispers in our ears that everything is going to be alright how do you know that preacher I know it because the Bible said all things work together for good to them that love God who are the called according to his purpose amen I've read the back of the book and I know that we win I know that there is a triumphant God who sits upon a throne amen and Jesus at his right hand and the Holy Ghost living inside of us let me tell you church be not afraid amen of what man can do God even said it this way in his word don't be afraid of them that can kill the body be afraid of him that can kill the body and cast that soul into hell let me tell you something if you're blood bought if you're born again your name is written down in the Lamb's book of life it don't matter what takes you out of this world you step out of this world into the next one to be ever with the Lord. The Bible said even this, to die is uh to live is profitable for you. But Paul said to die is gain. Amen. When we leave this world, we go in the presence of Almighty God. But I'm telling you, not in just the next world, but in this world to come, there is a present help right now. Amen. Thank God for that present help. He is our strength and he is our power. We have to realize that right now there is a great amount of fear. 
People are fearful not only of the COVID, and then rightfully so. We, we have declared and we have said, and it's been our official uh, position as, as the Alley Good Church of God and as your pastor and our lead, representing our leadership and our congregation, that we have uh, our official uh, position is that this virus is serious, that this virus can be deadly. It is very contagious. We're not going to minimize this, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to live in fear of a virus. I'm not going to live in fear of a transition in government. I'm not going to live in fear in my own house about what tomorrow might bring because I know who holds tomorrow. Come on and say amen. Right now, there's plenty of fear. Life is not normal. And boy, if, if this morning don't isn't a great example of that. I don't know what is. I'm preaching to an empty church. There's one man, Brother Craig, in the sound booth, and the church is completely empty. And we have tried to navigate through this uh, 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 virus and COVID sickness that's going on, and this is a response to something that has happened to our church in the last week or so, and we felt like that we would err on the side of caution and do this. We're not doing it out of fear. We're doing it out of caution to protect and to show that we love our brothers and sisters and to let the community know that we're going to respond in the right way and do the right thing. But make no mistake about it, church of the living God, we're not going to shut down. We're not going to be cowered into a corner somewhere because our God is a very present help. Amen. He's helping me right now. You know, when I walked up this platform to this morning, I said, oh, God, help me. I need you, Lord, because I'm going to stand before an empty congregation, an empty building. But the same God that promised me in uh, Psalm 46, he's a present help right here. A present help in my time of trouble. I feel the Holy Ghost right now in this place. I feel him on me. I hope that you feel him ministering to you. Why? Because the word of God is true. He's a present help. He's a refuge and strength in our time of need. But see now, when life is normal, we go about every just our everyday life just like it's usual. And that, you know, you got to go all, almost back to February 2020, nearly almost a year ago now when life was somewhat normal. There was none of this COVID. There was none of this uh, crazy violence in the street. There was none of all this corruption in the electoral process. There was none of this chaotic mess going on in Washington, D.C. All of this was not even thought about, not even in our minds, and we were going about our own business, going about as usual, doing the things that we desire to do. But then we, we understand that when that happens, we take for granted that we know what the day was going to bring. But what happens is when all of this took place, it, the normal became the abnormal. What used to be uh, the things, weddings and uh, funerals and hospital visitations and nursing homes and all of the other things that we took for granted that we could go and do the things, the church services, that we could do the things that we normally done. Now, there, it's, a, it's an everyday thing. We don't know what the next day's going to bring. But thank God that no matter what it brings, church of the living God this morning, that we have a present help. Praise God. Somebody ought to lift your hand where you are and thank God that he's your present help. He's your strength. He's your refuge, amen. And when there is trouble, when there is distress, when there is tribulation and trial, there is a God, amen, that stands ready to take care of his people. See, we didn't realize how vulnerable we are because during just one crisis, everything changes. We've seen examples of panic buying. We've seen examples of, uh, uh, of economic uh, downturn. We've seen all of this. And, and we don't realize sometimes how vulnerable we are at the system and the culture and the government that we live in. Amen. But again, I'm so glad that there is a God that rules and reigns and it is sovereign. If you ever hear me preach much, and many of you listening have heard me preach a number of times, there is something that runs through the theme of all that I preach and that I believe that God is indeed sovereign and this has not caught him by surprise. 
I want to say to this morning also that in all of this, I believe that God is speaking. God is speaking, church of the living God, to his church to finally wake up. And it's not going to be business as usual. That the church maybe was a little vulnerable, a little sleepy, a little lackadaisical, if you will. Matter of fact, maybe even a little slopeful. And maybe, God forbid, like the Laodicean church, a, a little lukewarm. But I believe that this is a wake-up call that the church should rise up and finally, one more time, be that glorious church church without spot or wrinkle that the Lord is coming back for. Come on and say amen. I believe that. I believe that this is happening, that it might wake the church up. And someone would say, oh, what we're going to do in, in this trial and tribulation. Listen, God is a refuge, a present help in our time of trouble. He's our strength. He's our will within our will. Amen. He's the miracle working God that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. But it is in this crisis point that we're in. Now, we're in a crisis. Make no doubt about it. And I know people's opinions are all over the place. Now, I've not dealt with this lately from the pulpit. I've had enough to preach on it. I don't have to go to this every week. But we, we, we've had a, we're in a crisis. I believe that as a government, we're in a constitutional crisis. I believe as a, as a church... We're in a spiritual crisis. I believe as an economic, in our economical uh, uh, system that we may see a crisis there. It wouldn't be the first time. Oh, I, and I believe that there uh, are many things that point that things may get worse before they get better. The Bible does teach, does it not, that in the last days perilous times shall come, and I believe that they are coming. But one thing that I remember, and this psalm gives me blessed hope, that God is a present help right now in the middle of the crisis that the church is facing. So thank God this morning that no matter what is happening, no matter what the crisis is, that we have a present help. The world don't have this. The church, the people, the living God have this blessed promise. Now one of the things that I can attribute to this morning that, that I can relate to is that we like things when we're in control. And I look around and I see an empty sanctuary this morning. I didn't have no control over this. I don't have any control over what tomorrow may bring. We had a little short meeting with some of the leaders and we talked about it. It was just an impromptu meeting. It was not a called meeting about what the next week might bring, about what our schedule as a church might bring uh, uh, for next Sunday morning or Sunday night in the following week and the, the things that we're planning out. We're, we actually had a yearly planning meeting planned for this Sunday after church where those department heads would come together and plan out 2021. And with the events that the church was going to do, we had that we canceled that today, and we're going to wait and have. We really don't know what we're going to. We don't that that sense of not having the control over something and not knowing what is going to happen. And I'm going to tell you when you don't have control and you don't have, you're not able to say, okay, on Monday we're going to do this and Sunday we're going to do this. This causes people to fear. Now, one of the craziest things that I've seen, and I'm all for social distancing. I'm all for wearing masks and I'm all for uh, washing hands and, and being safe during this, during this crisis, this COVID crisis that we're in. But people are so afraid that they're even driving their cars when they're by themselves and they got a mask on. I've seen it with my own eyes and I've joked about it, but it's not a joking matter really. I've made a few remarks to myself I, we were, my wife and my family, we were down at the beach back in October for a quick getaway. And I would get out in the mornings and go take a walk on the beach and, or, or sit and watch the drink coffee and watch the sun come up in the morning. And I would see people walking on the beach at 6 o'clock in the morning as the sun was lifting over the horizon and, 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 and enjoying the, the beautiful uh, scenery and nobody around them for hundreds of yards and they were walking on the beach wearing a mask. This kind of fear is unfounded. This kind of fear is not of God. Come on, church. 
I'm telling you that, the, and, and people are afraid to get out. People are afraid to, to go places. I'm not talking about not using common sense. I'm not talking about uh, 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 forgetting all of the guidelines. Absolutely, we need to do that. And for those precious people that have all these underlying conditions, you know that you've got to do what you feel is best for you to be safe. But I'm just trying to say something right now. In the midst of this lack of control and the uh, inability to go places and do things like we did before, amen, whether you're hunkered down in your house this morning and you don't want to go out or you're one of them that's going to be everywhere today understand that you can't go anywhere without the presence of God he is a present help in our time of trouble verses 2 and 3 in chapter 46 let me read on here a few more minutes the Bible said now listen here now I'm going to read verse 1 again God is our refuge and strength a very present help in time of trouble listen to this therefore Will not we fear, though the earth be removed? Did anybody get that? The Bible's talking about the whole earth just quaking and shaking. Will the mountains be carried into the midst of the seas? Did you see that? That God here is saying to the church that though everything around you seems to be falling down, the, the picture here is that of a mountains being carried into the midst of the sea, the be being removed, the earth being removed, a very earth-shattering, earthquaking, worldwide event. He said, even in the midst of all of that church, we're not going to fear. He said, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled and the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, he said, Selah, pause and think about this. Can we just stay there just a moment? God is our fortress. God's, God is so near and so dear to the people of God, to the presence of God, that God said no matter if, the, if all hell assails you, that God is right there with us. You know, I often thought, and I was, this was shared with me in a, in a meeting the other day, and I, I, it was so profound to me. I hope you have a personal time with the Lord. I hope mine is in the morning. And I, I, I love to get up. Sometimes I get busy. and Sometimes I get distracted. We all do. But I heard a, I heard a dear saint of God this past week uh, help me to understand even in a greater sense how important that time there is to spend with God, whether it's in the morning for you or night or somewhere. But the, God is waiting for you and I to stop what we're doing, to take a few moments, a few minutes, and get in his presence. You know why? Because he's there waiting on you. So now when I go into my personal time of devotion and reading and prayer time that I just spend, not, not so that I'll hear from God to give you something to preach, to preach on that week or to have a word from the Lord. No, that's for me to fellowship with my God. Come on here. My God, my Lord and my God. Sweet, sweet fellowship with the blessed Holy Ghost. That's my time with the Lord. And I realize now more than ever that that time is important to God also because God wants to spend time with his people because there he is. Listen now. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. He's our refuge, our strength, our power. Understand here, church, that God is right here with us. And how many of us go day after day and would ignore that blessed, precious promise? God is our fortress. God's power. Listen for just a moment or two more this morning. God's power is unshakable. Hear me this morning. God's kingdom will never be shaken. Though the earth shake, though the mountains be removed to the sea, Though the, earth, though the mountains shake, the sea roars. Though the whole earth be done away with, God's kingdom will stand. And those that are in, in this kingdom, those blood-bought, born again, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, the blessed people of God will persevere. And I'm going to help you with something this morning, and many of you know this already. God is going to help us through this. You hear me this morning. 
God is going to help his people through what we're going through. I don't like it that I don't have control. I don't like it that I don't, I can't make the services and go back. I don't know about you, but I don't go back to normal. I want to go back to pre-COVID times. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. I believe, and I preached on the coming of the Lord last week, I believe that we're living in the last of the last days. But church, we don't have to be afraid. God is our refuge, a present help in the time of need. I'm going to share two more scriptures and a couple more comments, and then I'm going to wrap this up. And oh, I want to tell you this morning, I, I miss my church family. I miss looking over and seeing familiar faces that have in the over three years that I've been here, have been here nearly every service. You people are a blessing and a comfort to me and your, your, your faithfulness to the work of the kingdom of God and to this church in every way has been a blessing to me and a help to me. But you're not with me this morning. There's nobody here but me and Brother Craig. But there is someone that sticks closer than a brother. He said, I'm your present help, Gary. I'm your strength. I'm your refuge. You can run to me when the trouble comes. Amen. I'm going to read verse 4 and 5. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. Listen, let me tell you something. There's a river flows from the throne of God. The Bible speaks many times. We know that the water in the, in the New Testament and Old Testament is a type of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Ghost of God. There is a river. There's not a trickle coming from the uh, throne of God. There's not a drip or a drop coming from the, from the throne of God. It's a gushing, thrushing river of grace and mercy and power and strength and anointing, amen, and comfort and everything that we need, amen, from the God who is with us and ever-present help in a time of need. There is a river. There's a reason why this is all together. Though all hell assail you, though the world seems to be crumbling around you, amen, there is God right beside you and out of God in the throne of God, from God the the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost, there flows a river. Out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. It's not a trickle. It's not a drop. It's, it's not a drip. It's not something that, that the world can dam up. It's not something that the world can stop. It's not something that the devil can come in and divert somewhere else, amen. It is something that is reserved for the people of God to enjoy all the blessings and the abundant life that God gives us here on earth. God is a present help in our time of trouble. Verse 6. Let me read verse 5. God is in the midst of her. The church shall not be moved. I put myself right in there. I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that standeth beside the waters, I shall not be moved. I'm, I'm, I'm anchored in that river. I'm standing beside that river that flows from the throne of God. If I need mercy, I can obtain mercy. If I need grace, I can obtain grace. If I need the power of God, I can obtain the power. If I need forgiveness, I can get forgiveness. If I need joy, everything that God abundantly gives his people is available. The Bible said the heathen rage, verse 5, I'm sorry, God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. Did you hear me this morning? God's going to help us, church. No matter what goes on, and I tell you, if this don't help you, it helped me. I've, God's been ministering to this to me all week long. 
I've had to decompress. I've had to pull away from all of the noise that is around my, my mind and what is going on. God, I want to look to you. The Bible said he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He started this in me, and he's going to end it, amen. And there's nothing that can happen in this world, nothing that the devil can do, the government can do, a disease or plague or pestilence can do. I belong and you belong to God. The Bible said the heathen raged. Oh, we see that, don't we, today? The ungodly, the atheistic belief system, the, 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 the uh, material uh, believers, materialistic believers, those secular uh, uh, humanistic belief systems that are out there, they rage and say there, what, there's no such thing as God. We're our own. We determine our own destiny. But let me tell you something. The Bible said the fool have said in his heart there is no God. They rage. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, and the earth melted. The Bible clearly teaches us that one day heaven and earth will pass away. He said, but my word is standing. How many of you believe his word is standing today? I do, amen. I believe God's word is standing. The Lord of hosts, verse 7, is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I'm going to read that again. The Lord of hosts is with us. This psalm is meant this morning. This psalm is meant to encourage the people of God. It's not a word for the world. It's not a word, it's not a word for the corrupt political system. It's not a word for the immoral and the heathen and the adulterer and the fornicator and the abominations that we see celebrated in our nation today. It's not for them, church. It's for us. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He's with us. He's our refuge. Doesn't matter what they say. I've heard so much doom and gloom on, on these prophetic voices. And then on the flip side, you hear so much, uh, oh, God's going to do this and God's going to do it. Listen, I don't know what all's right or not right, amen. I just know God's with us, and he's going to keep us, and he's going to protect us. And I want to close with verse 10 this morning. Be still. And know that I'm God. The Bible says to be still, people of God. Rest. Doesn't mean we throw common sense out the window. Doesn't mean that we forego what we know in, in, in this COVID crisis to keep ourselves safe. Absolutely, we do all of those things and more. There's not a bigger germaphobe in, in, out there than me. I, I wash my hands 10 times a day before COVID. I try to avoid, we, we, it's just common sense. God give us good common sense. But through all of this crisis through all of this lack of control and this snatching away of everything that we are so used to and had taken for granted that our lives would stay the way that they are. In just a few days, everything changed. And nearly a year later, we're still dealing and don't see the end in sight. But God said, be still and know that I'm God and that I'm in control and I'm with you. I'm near you. He's a very present help. I don't have to go knock on God's door and say, God, are you listening? Would you come down and help? No, he's already here. 
He's a present help. He said, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Verse 11, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. He's where I run to in this storm. May God help all of us today to take refuge in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May the Lord be with you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May God bless you in this upcoming week and all that you will put your hands to. May God keep you safe, watch over you, protect you and your family. Pray for us this morning as we embark on this journey into what we don't know is going to happen. The unknown, the uncertain, the trouble, the tribulation, the trials of all that we go through. But we have a present help. May God bless you and keep you. Thank you for being with us this morning. Amen and amen.